Music Avenue. And then we'll take it higher. Hey everyone, this is Manish Jain or Mr. Jain, and you are watching Electric Avenue. This is episode number 17. This is the April 2024 wrap up. And as usual, we got four things we're going to cover. We're going to cover the monthly registration numbers, any recent EV news, uh, EV car spotting, and lastly is a deep dive. And today's deep dive is going to be around charge point operators or commonly known as CPOs. These are the places where you go to get your car charged if you're not at home. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. And I've decided for uh, the new financial year of 2024, 2025, I'm going to now start focusing on beyond four wheel vehicles. I'm going to start looking at the entire space of electric vehicles. That's the two wheelers, the three wheelers, maybe some electric, electric buses. So I'm just going to mix it up and add in more content uh, because as you know, four wheelers are taking off, but there's a lot of action happening on the two wheel side and the three wheel side and mainly the three wheelers in the logistics side of it all. So that's what we're going to do. So let's just kind of dive right into the monthly numbers. All right. So here we are with uh, the monthly registration numbers. So first of all, I want to give a big thanks to evreporter.com. Um, I reached out to them and said, hey, your content is really good and I would love to be able to feature your numbers uh, on my channel and they agreed to and so here we are uh, i have got consent from them uh, and they've done a fantastic job i would definitely check out their website evreporter.com and they produce a monthly magazine which is really good it gives a good recap of what's happened in the space in the ev space here in india so i'd highly recommend it and so this is of course from the may issue that covers april kind of like the same thing with my channel it is we are now in may and we are covering april so as I would always do is I would talk about uh, the four wheel segment. So here we are in the four wheel segment uh, and here we are comparing uh, the past month of April 2024 and then the previous month of March 2024. So you can see there's some big differences uh, in overall sales. And I think that's just usually a run up towards the end of the year. A lot of uh, a lot of sales are are done so that they can kind of show good numbers. And then, of course, the first couple months of the new year are kind of a lag. But, you know, as usual, uh, and yeah, as you can see, this is in the EV Reporter format. I'm going to start uh, putting this into my format, but I thought I'd just kind of, you know, show the formatting uh, report that EV Reporter has so you can kind of see how it looks. And it's actually really good, as I mentioned. So here you go. Data Motors, as usual, you know, at around almost 5,000 units. And you've got MG Motor, Mahindra Mahindra, BYD. Uh, you've got uh, Hyundai down to 84 units. Uh, and then BMW 54, which I'm really surprised because I am seeing a ton of a ton of i7s on the road. I can't believe how many i7s I see. Uh, IXs are also picking up. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, when I look at the Mercedes-Benz number of 119, I almost feel it's uh, flipped because I don't see as many EQSs on the road, whereas I see a ton of IX and i7s all over. And also seeing some of the, the newer lower end BMWs uh, coming on the roads. And as usual, you got Volvo with 36, Kia with their EV6 at 20 units, and then the rest other, of course, that usually entails some number of Audis and Porsches in there. So total for the month of April 2024 is around 7,300 units. And that's kind of where we are with that. Now, if you take a look at uh, this is one of the things that always gets me is, you know, I, you know, talk about four wheelers. And here, if you look at the numbers we just talked about, that is, you know, 7,290 7,300 four-wheel vehicles, and not a lot. But now when you compare it to what's actually happening in the e-rickshaw, and you look at what's happening in the two-wheeler, it's actually very, very small because there's a lot of stuff happening on the two-wheel side and the three-wheel side. And that's my plan is to start talking more and more about those other segments that are happening here in India. So now let's get to one of the first ones is this is kind of a monthly you know trend uh and this is what's great about this uh this month's report uh, from EV reporter is they've got a paid version but in the free version that i saw is it gives you a trend from you know the last year from april 2023 all the way to where we are today and you can kind of see the trend of you know how things are uh comparing the two-wheel market the rickshaws 
goods carriers, four wheel vehicles, and then the busing, you know, the bus environment. So overall, you know, things are kind of moving up slowly. Of course, there's a lot of movement in the two wheel segment, but overall the rest of the segments are kind of bumping along, not as much uh, sales as I thought there would be. And if you were to look at the two wheel segment and you look at the, the main line, so this is a great chart because it actually compares not only the EV sales of these companies, but the, the ICE sales. So if you look at Hero Motor Corp, the number one two wheeler brand in India, they had sales of, you know, five, you know, five lakh uh, vehicles, uh, you know, 5.1 lakhs, which is a little over half a million vehicles. Uh, and that's total sales. But if you, but if you look at if, if you look at how many are ICE versus EVs, you know, you go the percentages. It's like next to nothing. It's it's a very small percentage, both for Hero Hero Motor Corp and also Honda Motorcycles, uh, TVS, but all of them very very small numbers. I can tell you. Uh, in fact, Honda doesn't have anything at the moment. Uh, and then if you look at Ola, which we just saw is one of the main guys. You know, so Ola is here. And they did for the month around 34,000 units. Uh, so even, you know, when you look at 34,000 units in comparison to, let's say, 500,000, you know, for Hero Motor Corp, it's still a very small number. And I think that's the whole idea is, you know, that, that entire space has to grow on the two-wheel side. And I think there is a lot, a lot of room to grow for Ola and uh, Aether Energy. So let's now take a look at uh, the overall Ola Electric. As I mentioned, this kind of shows you the year over year growth and the month over month growth. And as usual, like I said, you know, Ola is the is is the 800 pound gorilla in the two wheel space, you know, followed by TVS. Then you've got Bajaj and then you've got Aether and then you have a whole bunch of these other guys, you know, Ampere. Uh, and then you've got Revolt, and then there's a, there's a, a lot of other ones like Ultraviolet. There's a lot of them in the space that are not really covered because um, they're doing really small numbers. And the idea is the entire space should start growing uh, collectively as more and more people kind of adopt uh, two-wheel vehicles in the EV space. And, uh, you know, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of show you this graphic. Uh, this graphic is uh, from Tesla Club India. Uh, they've got a very active Twitter page, so I would highly suggest you follow them on Twitter. And this is their Twitter handle at teslaclub.in. And these guys are always, you know, posing questions to Elon about, you know, coming to India. But they had a really interesting stat just recently, and they were comparing, you know, two-wheel, three-wheel, four-wheel buses, uh, total EV registrations versus ICE registrations, and then, you know, the percentage. So... What really sticks out to me is in the three wheel segment, it, it, there is a huge adoption for, you know, battery electrics. And I think, you know, when you look at logistics, you look at, you know, uh, movements in rickshaws, I, I can see more and more of them doing it. So that's where, you know, that, that's a bright spot. That's a very India centric type story. You don't see that in the US, of course, you don't see that in China. So when people talk about, you know, let's do a cookie cutter of what's happening in Europe and US and bring it to India, most likely that'll fail. You got to do things very differently in this country. And this, you know, image just pretty much shows you the differences in India versus the rest of the world. So, so that's kind of a wrap up for the numbers. And like I said, my plan is to do this more and more on the other segments in India versus just only focusing on the four wheel segment. So hopefully you like it. Let me know with your comments uh, below in the YouTube channel section. And that's a wrap up for the numbers. All right, next up is EV news for April, 2024. And you're not gonna believe this, but there is absolutely nothing to report this month. Can you believe it? I think part of it is there was so much happening uh, in the previous month. And then actually the elections in India have started. So someone, I was uh, talking to someone from the Invest India team, and they mentioned that the code of conduct basically says that politicians really cannot talk about uh, certain aspects. And I think part of it is they can't talk about new, uh, new government projects or new uh, uh, government initiatives or public uh, private partnerships or any sort of you know new announcements uh, foreign FDI things like that 
Uh, so it's strictly, I think, off the books. And I think that's part of the reason why there's really no new announcements. Even the EV policy was rolled out very quickly before that code of conduct uh, kind of came into, came into place here in India. So really, there's nothing happening. And so, yeah, it's, it's a big nothing for news. Uh, there is, of course, things happening. But as far as newsworthy, not much to report for the month of April. So I'm hoping next month we get a lot more stuff to talk about. But that's pretty much it for the news, as I said. There is nothing. All right, next up is EV car spotting. I had a very unique spotting uh, a couple weeks ago. I was at the IIT campus here in Bombay. And what do I see? I see an EV6. <laughs> so uh, this was the uh, registration number or plate number. I mean, this is obviously not a valid one. This is on an internal campus, so it's a private vehicle, but it was IITB-EV-06. Uh, so this was actually a, a campus e-taxi that would take students around from point A to point B. Um, I, thought it looked very, I thought it looked very cool. Uh, so I had to do some little research and it's actually a product uh, offered by Moto EV down in Atlantic Beach, Florida. Very surprising that they don't have vehicles from the students. I would have thought, you know, they've got a bunch of engineering guys putting together something that would have been very unique. But I just thought it was very cool to see this uh, and you know it, it was just it, you know I was standing on the road and it kind of creeped up behind me and that's the beauty of electrics they're just silent as hell uh, but this one looked very very cool so that is the EV car spotting for April 2024. All right we're at the next section which is the deep dive and as I always say this is my favorite section so this is about charge point operators or CPOs think of this as your local petrol pump uh, these are the guys that provide the charging for your vehicle when you're on the road somewhere. And it's a very fragmented space. And that's one of the reasons why this is a report that comes out uh, very often. This is uh, a report from a guy named Priyans Murarka. He runs a substack on exp with evs.in is the uh, url but basically it's experiences with evs and the whole idea was he wanted to document him taking his ev all across india and seeing what kind of charging infrastructure there is all over the country and so that's kind of him detailing it and he does these reports every so often so the report i'm going to talk about is the free version that he's offered on his uh, Substack or blog post and I would highly suggest you get the paid version if you have any interest in drilling down into the details. If you're you know, someone on the EV infrastructure side, I'd say that this is a report you would definitely want to get. Uh, and his full report actually uh, you know, drills down both into Type 2 and the CCS2 charging infrastructure. Uh, for this little piece here on the deep dive, I'm only going to focus on the CCS2 uh, infrastructure and that is basically you know what we call DC fast charging uh, and I think uh, you know give you a little insight into how fragmented the market is so as I said if you subscribe you know if you get the paid version it gives you a lot more information it'll give you uh, which is the most critical thing here is the not working charging points I think that is the most insightful because what you'll see is you know people will say we've got a thousand you know locations we've got you know five thousand chargers but you know when you look at the numbers that are actually not operating it's a little concerning and i think that's really what all of these cpos need to focus on is you know 100 percent uptime um you know in technology we call it five nines of uptime which is 99.999 uh, percent uptime which means you only have five minutes of downtime a year that's a pretty high bar to set but honestly when you're traveling that's what should be expected of these cpos so I will get into the first graph, which basically talks about the rise of CCS2 charge, charging points uh, from when Priyans first started monitoring this. And this was back in August 2022. Uh, you know, let me just change this pen color so we can kind of see it be a little better. And so here, you know, he did, there's around 1,046 number of guns. So they call these guns the actual, you know, unit that you plug into the car that's a gun so there was a thousand forty six guns in august 2022 and here we are uh just about three four months ago in february 2024 and we've got over 5500 guns so you can see you know that's you know a 5.5x uh increase in the number of you know charging units available which is great and that's what we need to see more of so people don't feel like oh my god i don't want to get range anxiety and things like that uh and 
This image really talks about the fragmentation. Uh, think of these as, you know, these are all the different companies that are out there. So, you know, when you look at this, you're like, oh my God, there is a ton of companies, you know, probably close to 2025. 20, but when you really drill into the number, you'll notice there are really two massive companies. One is the largest, which is Tata right here. That is their uh, Tata Easy Chargers. And then the second one is GOBP. Both of these together, you know, take up the lion's share. They've got a lot of infrastructure built out in the state of Maharashtra, and that's the reason. Uh, so when you can take a look at it, this is just another way of looking at it. You know, uh, this is more uh, kind of percentage wise. So you can see this takes up, you know, probably close to one third of the pie uh, is just those two. And then you've got a whole bunch of others. You know, you get a ton of them. Actually, I didn't realize there's so many down here. Uh, so it's, it's very fragmented market. Uh, a lot of people got into the market. And I'm sure there'll be more and more people that are going to get into the market. But it just kind of shows you. Uh, this one, it, it talks more about what is in Western India, uh, which is, you know, talking about uh, Damandiyu, Goa, Gujarat. Uh, you can read the rest, Maharashtra, Rajasthan. So again, same thing though, you know, because as I, as I said, the build out of Tata in Geo has really been in the state of Maharashtra. So that's the reason why it's going to always show, you know, close to one third, uh, you know, to 50 percent of the build out is them. And then if you look at this here, this is the one that really kind of is eye opening to me. You know, this really talks about the the level of charges that are faulty or not working. So when you look at Tata, you know, they've got, uh, you know, a number of faulty chargers. And if you look at the percentage of faulty chargers, you know, 17 percent, that is a very high number. So imagine you go into a Tata, you know, location and they've got five charging units. You know, one of them won't be working, which is OK if you've got five units. But the truth of the matter is there are some locations that only have one unit. And when you go to that one, you, it may not be working. And that's really, you know, disconcerting. So that is at the Tata power side. But what's really even more so is Adani and even BPCL. Very surprising for BPCL to be at 29% and Adani to be at 29%. So that's one third. I mean, that is kind of atrocious. You know, the hit rate, you know, you're driving down the road and, you know, you got a one out of three chance of a charger not working or having some issue. And that's one of the reasons why I think a lot of people are kind of hesitant on using EVs for long road trips because you can just see this number. Really, this number should be, you know, just a very small percent, maybe sub 1%, really, if anything. Uh, how many times have you been to a petrol pump and it's not working? Uh, I can't even think the last time that's actually happened to me. So that's one of the issues. Uh, but that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this report. Like I said, very, really good information, really good stuff. Let me just go back up here, uh, you know, and I would highly recommend you visit this URL for his sub stack and go check it out. He's got some really good content. So that's exp with evs.in. And like I said, you know, he uh, talks mainly about type two and CCS2 in his reports and really drills down into the data, which is great. So for any data scientist looking at the EV space in India, this is probably your nirvana of data. Just, uh, you know, a shit ton of stuff you can take a look at and go through it and geek out. So that's pretty much it. That's a wrap on episode number 17 of Electric Avenue. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. Hit me up. And uh, till next time, see you next month. Oh, no, we're going to rock down to Electric Avenue. And then we'll take it high.